Good evening to everybody. Welcome to the Law of Insurance class and this class that I am going to do the Marine Insurance. And before I could start, I would like to affirm myself whether you are with me and I am with you so that we are traveling the same boat. Please read, unmute and read what I posted on the screen. Anyone? Yes. Anyone can make it read. Unmute and read. Are you hearing me? Sir, good evening. Unmute and read what I posted on the screen. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Marian Incident. Yes. Professor Dr. Mangusta Bhutan. Very good. That means you could see what I posted on the screen and you could hear also what I'm saying, what I'm speaking. Okay, let us see that uh, Marathi students in the class. Uh, it is a uh, virtual class one Marathi students uh, nature and scope of Marathi students. Yes, uh, what is the nature and scope of the Marathi students? We will see in this class. Uh, and uh, number one, introduction. Marathi insurance is one of the oldest uh, contract of insurance which has been applied by law. It has been originated from the Greek and Roman Marathi insurance law. So the purpose of making the uh, earlier there would not be any road transport and there is not uh, by air transport but only the marine transport because uh, only ships would uh, uh, come uh, sail and uh, reach to the uh, India. Uh, that is the reason that uh, Vasco de Gama discovered what 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 Vasco de Gama discovered? Yes. If you know it, you tell me. If you don't know it, you say pass on. Invention to America, sir. <laughs> Vasco de Gama did not discover America. It is the Columbus who discovered uh, America. What's Vasco de Gama discovered? Goa. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Marine only it has come over there. That is why Marine insurance is the oldest uh, insurance uh, in the type of the contract. So, insurance of marine is one which is connected with the insurance for risk that are involved during the transporting of the goods from one place to its destination. There are various businesses and organizations that involve the continuous international trade and transporting of the goods from one place to another place, in, an one, in other words, from one country to another country. Then, individuals who involve the trading have generally have large sums of money involved in each shipment and takes place, and which makes the risk factor high. An individual, when they want to shift their goods from by water, means on the ship, then the risk would be the high on the water rather than the risk on the land. The risk on the land and the risk in the air and risk in the water, which risk is more? Premium is more, sir. Water risk is more because we cannot predict and suppose if the sky is not clear, if there is a lot of fog, then we can land, we cannot take off the flight also, till the fog is complete out. And uh, once we take off, was took in place, then uh, if any turbulent waves are there, tur not waves, turbulent clouds are there, then it will go in a slow manner. If they could not see it, which is the nearest airport would be there, the plane will land in that nearest airport. But when it comes to the water is concerned, we cannot predict when the tsunami will come, when the torpedoes and uh, hurricane and the turbulent water would be there. It is very difficult to predict it, hence uh, risk on the water is more when compared with the other two, either by air or by the land. So that is the individual taking a lot of risk when they want to shift the uh, cargo from one country to another country with the uh, that is the high cost which is involved over there in the sh uh, goods which are there going to make the shipment. So according to the Marine Insurance Act 1963, a contract uh, of marine insurance is an agreement uh, whereby the insurer undertakes to indemnify the assured uh, in the manner and to the extent thereby agreed against the marine losses, uh, that is to say, the losses incidental to marine adventure. 
So when the marine adventure is there, really it is an adventure. Till it reaches to destination, we cannot say whether we will be successful reaching over there, including our life as well as the goods. The meaning of marine insurance is uh, interpreted by its uh, this definition. Marine insurance is understood to be contract between the insurer and the insured, in which the insurer agrees to pay a fixed or agreed amount of money to be insured against the losses. So, it is the insurer and the insured, they will agree for the certain amount because they will fix the amount for the goods. So, with that amount, automatically the premium will be, should be paid. See, the premium also, marine insurance is like a general insurance. Only once the premium should be paid. Is it clear? Yes, clear, sir. And that to be depending upon the voyage. Is it some voyage is time bound? Some is uh, till the voyage is over. Some is uh, um, depending upon the three months, or six months. If the voyage will not be reached the three months, of course, extra period will be added over there. So, marine insurance is covers the transportation is a wide array. It does not only involve the transportation of goods through the ships and water, but also involves the various form of transportation of goods, which include transportation through the means of a transit. In, when you say the marine, uh, sometimes now you have to carry the goods by rail, and uh, some places you carry the goods by air, and uh, later on through the ship. Because the goods cannot reach to the, the goods cannot reach to the a ship unless until they will be traveled by the rail or unless until they will travel by the air. So that is the reason it includes the rail as well as the air also there when the shipment would be made. And carriers which are mainly done through the roads. So other carriers is uh, by the roads uh, but some carriers by the air and the major transport in the world is through the marine only. Means the sea route only and water only. So, the lot of uh, goods will be carried uh, mostly by the ship rather than the, um, the trucks or the flights. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Good. Marine incidents are uh, contracts of indemnity. Yes, whatever the loss would be occurred over there, that will be indemnified. Only the actual amount of loss or the amount promised by the insurer can be claimed by the insured or the fixed amount or what is promised by the insurer by the insurer to the insured, the agreed amount uh, only after the damage has occurred to the insured party. But only the when the damage occurred only that day, the insurer will pay to the indemnify the insured. Suppose in the OVA there is no damage occurred, the goods reach to the destination in a good condition or safe custody or without any damage. At that instance, the insurer need not to pay it. Once the premium is paid over there, it is over. Unless until it is a type of the premium, type of the insurance uh, they made, marine insurance. So a contract of marine insurance is based on uh, utmost good faith. I already told you the Oberam Fede, that is utmost uh, good faith. Uh, they have to reveal each other open heartedly uh, regarding the goods and the insurer should have to say the what type of the insurance that he is going to make it out and the insured is going to buy. So all these thing conditions should be made, made it very much clear. No part should try and cheat the other. So no one should have to cheat the other. Both parties should disclose all important and material information related to the insurance and goods being insured. So whatever the type of the insurance would be there, it is the insurer should have to inform to the insured and whatever the type of the goods which are shipping from one country to another country should be informed to the insurer. Means the nature of the goods. If it is a perishable nature or it will be hard enough, it can be carried even months also doesn't matter. But uh, we cannot carry the tomatoes for uh, entire one month or two months. But the paddy and other uh, rice or potatoes, it can be. But other things cannot be because the time bound one. So the uh, insurance covers the loss which is caused by the damage. Whatever the damage will be agreed uh, upon the two parties are the destruction of the goods and the freight charges, merchandise, cargo. So the insurance also covers the loss by damage or destruction to the instrument or means of transport of the goods, freights, merchandise or cargo, whether the goods or instruments of transportation is on the land or sea or air. So whatever the thing would be there, till it reaches to the destination, it will be covered by the land, it covered by the air and later on it will be almost covered by the water. 
that is the C. So nature of marine insurance, uh, marine insurance is one of the most important and oldest concept of insuring a party from damage suffered by the loss or destruction of goods or the instrument or transportation. So the contract of such insurance should comply with all the essential standard contract and should not be void a contract. So these contracts are generally I told you that it is adhesive contracts or we can say standard form of contract because as it is it is printed over there and the insured only have to put the signatures unless until the nature of the insurance varies. The main essential of the valid contract according to the Indian Contract Act 1872 is that contract should consist of an offer which is a proposal, an acceptance which is to go ahead by the acceptor and a consideration that is said to be a premium payable on the completion of the contract. So the contract of marine insurance is made on vehicles of transportation and goods and cargo, freight, any other commodity or interest can be legally insured whether the transportation of goods or cargo or freight is made through the means of the land, air or water. So a contract of this insurance is held between the insurer and the insured, where the insurer promises to indemnify the insured upon the occurring of any untoward incident or damage to the property. So generally, there are mainly two kinds of the marine insurance are there. One is ocean marine insurance, the other is inland marine insurance. In a ocean marine insurance, the insurance of the ocean is one which is connected to and covers the damage or losses of the perils of the transported at sea. So when, a, when the ship is on water, as sometimes you can use the sea, sometimes you can say the ocean, sometimes we can say on the water, but all are the same in one way in another way because it deals with the marine. Because the sailing would be there, advantage would be there, voyage would be there. So on the water, that's why we can say marine insurance. So ocean marine insurance is one of the largest option of insurance in the world of today. So generally ocean marine insurance means the insurance which will be on the water mostly. It will be the largest one. So inland marine insurance, this insurance of inland is one which is related to and covers the damage and losses of the risk of transportation on the land or in the on the land. So inland marine insurance, either on the land or in the land, in, in the land insurance available on stand alone can be covered with the other insurances. So marine insurance is normally opted and considered with the case related to the overseas and the internal trade. See, when the goods are coming from the factory to the harbor, there would be definitely either by train or by road or by freight, I mean by plane. But once it comes to the harbor, it becomes a ocean, it becomes a ocean marine insurance. But uh, from the production place, it reaches to the harbor, it is said to be the, it is said to be the inland marine insurance. So marine insurance is normally opted and concerned with the cases related to the overseas or international trade. This is mostly the overseas, international trade would be there. The transportation of goods from one country to another during the international trade could be Worry for many individuals as there are numerous risks involved in the transportation of such goods from one country to its destination, marine insurance cover the product such a risk. See, where is a long merchandise would be there from one country to another country. So there are a lot of risk would be there, either man-made or God-made. So the shipping company will also, on the other hand, pay more attention to the safety of the ship. Hence, these insurance companies handle the insurance of the instrument of transport to which makes this company handle all types of the risk that could possibly occur during the transportation of goods from one place to another, that means one country to another. So that was the thing. And generally, as I told you, ocean marine insurance, its premium is high because, because the chances of the damage or occurrence and what incidents, the risk is more, probability is more on water. So scope of marine insurance, the scope of marine insurance is very wide and it covers not only the goods that are risked during the transportation but covers almost every risk that could occur in the process of transportation whether it is the goods or the instrument of transport. Whether it is on land or in the ocean or the air, marine insurance will cover the loss and damage if the goods and freights merchandise or the instrument of transport face some perils during the transit. Whatever the perils during the transit from the production side till it reaches to destination, so the voyage adventure, adventure means by sailing, 
So all the all things will be covered and indemnified by the insurer. But provided it should be very much clear between the terms and conditions when we are make, signing the contract. The concept of the marine insurance was defined by the Marine Insurance Act cover all all man-made calamities. Say he said all man-made calamities. That means there is a guard calamities also there, like the natural disasters or natural catastrophe, or we can say what is the another name for the natural disaster? Yes. Why? Sir, tsunami, sir, act of God. Yeah, that is act of God. Eh? But uh, when you say the man-made calamities, it means uh, the negligence on the part of it when you are transporting it. Then God is uh, like the natural catastrophe, natural calamity, or natural disasters. So the perils which include theft, robbery, piracy, arson. This is uh, generally not... Uh, uh, God made, it is a man made. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, theft, man will do robbery, man will do piracy, sea pirates, arson. Yes, they will burn it if they don't pay it. The insurance also covers the natural calamities. These natural calamities means act of God, post majeure, such as earthquakes, lightning, cyclones, and tornado, even tsunami, etc., which is not under the control of a human being. The concept of this insurance also includes stranding or sinking of ships as in many circumstances. So sinking also there, stranding also there. Both the way are moored because it will be stranded in the, uh, what I say, shallow water. When the depth water is not there, at that instant it will be stranded uh, on the uh, what, bottom of the uh, sea, uh, mostly the, um, the sand. So. In sinking of ships uh, also will be included in some occasions uh, uh, regarding the man-made perils. So, no return of the ship and goods which have been sent out. Suppose uh, uh, the whereabouts of the ship also be not known. At that instance, that also be covered over there in the marine insurance. So, many types of the insurances would be there. In conclusion, the concept I want to say that uh, the insurance of marine is one such concept which has been getting developed and seeing a change since the ancient times of the Greek and Roman law. And this insurance is a widespread concept has its uh, still being practiced regularly by those who involves in trade and uh, transport of the business. The essential and principle of the laid down in the Marine Insurance Act of 1963. So the main ideology of the insurance is to make sure buyer and seller and transporter don't suffer extreme losses and run out from the business as there are high amount of the money involved in the transportation of goods and international trade while there is also high and prevailing risk of the work of transit and international trade. So when you are sending the goods to one country to another country, do you think that you will send the goods only one quintal? Yes. Anyone? When you are sending the shipment from one country to another country, can you send the goods like one quintal or one kilo? One quintal too. No, sir. Extra, extra use of goods. The container itself is having many quintals. Yes, sir. The container itself. <laughs> because always the goods will be sent in the container. So they will say that whether you need the full container or half container. They say, no, we need a half container. Then half container goods, they will load other thing. And this man will half container they load. Because each container capacity is there that much can load that much goods of worth and size and weight. So not in the kilos, containers. Half container, right. whole container, full containers. They will load it and that's a measure. They will send the goods from one country to another country. So these are the few points. Then let us move to another point where we want to see. Yes. Where is that? Let me check. This we have seen it. Yeah, this is the thing which I made. Then I also made the another notes with this. Let me come to that point. 
Maray. Yes. This is one thing it is here, yeah. Another also I prepared, eh, Maray, no? Yeah, it is here. Yeah. So, insurance policy is nothing but indemnity, as we studied in the Marriott Insurance. And uh, it is through the Marriott Insurance Act, it is made uh, the, the principle of uh, uh, Marriott Insurance, not Marriott Insurance, any insurance is indemnity is there, number one. Number two, insurable interest is there. Number three, utmost good faith is there. Number four, proximate cause is there. Number five, subrogation is there. Number six, contribution is there. And uh, yeah, these are the generally six or seven points which comes under the principle of insurance. The same thing will be applicable to the marriage insurance also because marriage insurance also is nothing but the contract of insurance. Is it correct? Is it yes, not? Sir. So indemnity yes, because uh, it is the indemnity means whatever the amount is agreed over there, that will be indemnified by? Yes. That is indemnified by Please tell me Ramaya It is indemnified by Ramaya Then who? Then who? Insult sir Pardon? Insured. Insurer. Indemnified by the insurer to insure. Who got? Whose goods are damaged. So, total loss are as agreed by the parties. Either the man-made or God-made. Which is already clearly mentioned in the contract of indemnity. In the insurance policy. So that is the indemnified is there. So when he indemnified also, we don't make the we don't make the insurance unless until we have the insurable interest. The, because we know it, the goods are at risk, then our interest should be there, better it should be insured. That's why insurable interest is there as the principle of uh, insurance contract. With that we only will insure it. And uh, at most good faith, I already tell you, told you, Uberam Fede. Means each party should have to disclose, disclose, disclose what? Disclose what? To say that I do have the, uh, I do have the hundred hundred pounds in my wallet. To disclose. If the insured is there regarding the goods, if the insurer is there regarding the policy and its details, what should be exclusion classes, what should be covered classes? Each other they have to disclose it. In case if any hidden thing is there, then automatically the contract will be terminated. No more in existence, we can say. Apart from the duty of the disclosure, what they do, the insured must act towards the insurer in good faith throughout the duration of the contract. So that is the utter, the utmost good faith is there. Whether non-disclosure is intentional or inadvertent, the effect is that same the policy may be avoided. Although deliberation and material non-disclosure would usually amount to fraud and render the policy void. So next proximate cause that we already studied it in the insurance, uh, principle of insurances. So insurer or liable if an insured peril is proximate cause of the loss. If an insured peril is only the remote cause of the loss, we cannot predict it at the time that amount will, that the damage will not be covered. The proximate cause being in an uninsured is expected peril, then insurer are not liable. So that is a subrogation, I told you, the insurer will pay first, later on he will step into the shoe of the insured and get the damages from the 
other party whose fault at the hundred percent would be there. So that is called subrogation. And the subrogation is the right which one person has of standing in place of another and availing himself all the rights and remedies of the other, whether already enforced or not. So that is a, about the subro subrogation. And here I have given some of the point. In marine insurance, where an insurer pays a total loss, he is entitled to take over the interest of the assured in whatever they may remain the subject matter so paid for. Then second point, and he is in a subrogated all the rights and remedies have issued from the time of the loss. So they will get it back from the person who is at the fault, stepping into the shoe of the insured. First and foremost, the insurance company will come to the rescue of the victim. Later on, they will realize who is the actual like, the fault and they realize that amount from the person. Suppose if that person doesn't have the insurance policy, then it will be if the fellow doesn't have the insurance policy at that time, why the insurer will pay? Am I right? Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I right? Sorry, yes, sir. The question. Why the insurance yes, will pay for it? Because there is a contract. Suppose if the contract is expired or no more contract, do you think that insurer will pay the amount? No, sir. Suppose the damage occurred last month and he wa today he wants to take the new insurance policy. Does it cover the last damaged goods? No, sir. No, no sir. No cover. It is not covered over there. It is no. So contribution, yes. Suppose if you are insured the same with the three or four insurers, at that end, either you can claim from one the entire amount or you can claim from the proportionate amount, from the contribution from the other place. Suppose the one insurer paid the entire amount to you, then that insurer will file a case with the another insured insurers to give their contribution to him because he paid on behalf of him also. So this is the contribution. There must be at least two policies of insurance when the contribution comes. All insurance must policy of indemnity, no doubt. The policy must cover the same interest, the same subject matter, the same peril, and loss must occur. The policies must be enforced at the time of loss. All policies must cover. The policies must be legally enforceable. And the, moreover, the policy will be legally enforceable also. With the one insurance, like, let us presume it, married insurance. See, depending upon the insurance policy, the policy will expire. Suppose if you take time-bound policy or overage policy. If overage policy is taken, then if the once the overage is over, means the goods are reached to the destination, means overage is completed. When it is completed, there is no question of any other thing. In case nothing has happened to the goods or to the ship, then nothing going to get it. Because whatever the premium they paid is, they pull up the amount. That is the benefit to the insurer. So that is the contribution that we need. And the features of married insurance, I told you that there is the offer and acceptance and the payment of a premium, contract of immunity, utmost good faith, insurable interest, contribution, period of married insurance. So whatever the period would be there agreed, that period should be covered over there. And deliberate act will not be covered. Because if you want to damage yourself, your ship, then you, can, you are not going to get it. Suppose you have burned intentionally your own house or shop, then the claim you cannot make it out. Because the insurance people also not uh, the insane person, they are the sane person. So they will see that how the burnt uh, as are made. If they found that intentionally it is covered, he burned it, means he is not going to get it. So claims also there, then operation of the marine insurance, Marine insurance plays an important role in the domestic trade as well as the international trade. Most contracts of the sale require that the wood must be covered either by the seller or by the buyer against the loss or damages. So types of the contract responsibility of the insurance free on board. So the free on board is one type of it. Till the goods are reached over there, the board, the steamer, the buyer is responsible thereafter. Okay. The insurance, 
done whatever the, he likes it. The type of the insurance, he can make it out. Which type of the insurance they would like to make it out. So the free on rail. Suppose free on rail, the FOR contract above, this is mainly relevant to the internal transactions. The cost and freights, here also the buyer responsibility, cost and freights contract. Normally attached to one goods are placed on board. So he may take care of the insurance from the point onwards. From that point onwards, the insurance will cover. The another is cost, insurance and freight. So cost is there, insurance is there, freight is there. In this case, the seller is responsible, right, for the arranging the insurance up to the CAF contract, means cost insurance and freight contract, till the destination. He includes the premium charge as part of the cost of record in the sale invoice also. Of course, when he paid the amount of the premium, he may get it from the invoice also because I insured it till it will be there. So you should indemnify it as agreed. If not, it will be borne by the seller itself. So these are the certain points of view. Now we will see the types of the marine cargo insurance. What are the types of the marine cargo insurance? Can anybody will read it? A? Types of marine cargo insurance, so specific why, A, specific wise policy, a specific wise policy covers a transportation a transportation of goods through inland transport, import and export of specific destinations. Yes, this is a specific wise policy. From the point of the production till it reaches to harbor, from harbor it reaches to the destination of other country. So it comes under the specific OH policy. A specific OH policy covers transportation of the goods through inland, inland transport means from the, from the factory it is manufactured, then inland it reaches to the harbor, from harbor it makes the OH. So import and export for a specific destination, which destination they will make it over, that is called a specific OH policy is one type of the policy. Then B, open policy or open cover. This policy, an open policy or an open cover is an undertaking to cover all shipment transit that will be made during the year. During the year, they said, at inception, the insurer will have only general details of the cargoes, estimated sum insured, OH and qualifying vessel that will be used. And here, specific details are provided for each shipment in order of dispatch or in the form of periodic declaration. So in the open policy, either may be agreed for during the year or month or any other terms and condition they could put it over there in the open policy. That's why we can say open policy, that we can keep the riders there. And when the riders are more, then a premium would be the more. The riders means conditions to be covered. So that is the open policy or open cover policies. And C, annual sales turnover policy. This is on the sales of turnover policy has become very popular in India. Why? This is no different way from any open policy except that the rate of premium is charged only on the sales turnover. See, the point is the premium is based on the sales turnover and any other component not come captured by the term sales turnover. So, on the sales, the premium would be there. It is also known as the sales turnover policy or STOP and annual turnover policy in different companies. Either you can say annual turn policy or in uh, state uh, turnover policy. What is that? Which policy, which income tax we are paying? Annual turnover that is. Is it or not? Sure. See, annually that you will make, no, how much you end, how much you spent, how many your dependents, what is the medical facility, med medical bill, and all the, what are the standard deduction, after deducting only, then you pay to the amount which is extra, that amount which is taxable. Is it? Is it or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let us see the D point, what it says. Insurance cargo imported to India is subject to the payment of customs duty as per the Customs Act. This is a separate 
freight is freight charges are separate and the insurance is separate the type of insurance you paid the premium is separate but the there would be also a government excise duty is there central excise duty as per the customs act and this duty can be included in the value of the cargo insured under the marine cargo policy but a separate policy can be issued in which case the duty insurance clause is incorporated in the policy suppose if it is agreed over there in the policy that that uh, customs uh, should be borne by the borne by the seller whatever the customs duty would be there that will be borne by the seller if you such a thing would be there then seller will take care of the custom duty so if if such a thing is not there it is the buyer who has to pay the custom duty at the destination next e contingency insurance are buyers or sellers this policy extends to cover the issued contingent financial interest in any goods where the issued has no responsibility to insure on the terms of the sale where the cover period is more restrictive than afforded under this policy so contingency insurance uh, at the buyer or not means a, a stipulation would be there if this happened over there this much amount is going to be paid means contingency means some condition should be fulfilled but the but the, the condition should not be impossible again so it is the terms of the sale where the cover period is more restrictive with the officially afforded under the policy so there are different types of the insurance policies are available so depending upon which type is suitable to the shipment and uh, such policy can be obtained like uh, in the summer only cotton clothes are very much suitable in winter woolen 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 applicable so depending upon the wood type of the insurance that we are to supposed to take it uh, then we can make it out suppose in some times uh, <clears throat> there are turbulent waves are there at that instant the premium would be high in some places <coughs> excuse me such a turbulent waves are not there then the uh, the premium is low i, I don't know whether you could uh, hear in the uh, in the flight tickets also in some months uh, the season is there in the flight charges are more in on season the flight charges are less are you following me yes sir yes when in academic year ends there in the either in european country or the african continent the charges are high because everybody visit their own native places a negative country native country but in the when the running of the college is there like the mid mid semester or mid at the time charges are very less because all colleges educational institutions are running and hence nobody will travel there mostly so at that instance the un season is there where the charge is less so that is the way here also exclusion of marine cargo policies also there loss caused by willful misconduct of the insured if the misconduct is there that will be excluded and ordinary leakage or ordinary loss in the weight or volume ordinary wear and tear would be there these are normal trade losses which are inevitable and not accidental nature suppose if you go to the butcher shop if you buy the flesh in the morning the weight of the flesh is more in the morning but if you buy in the lunch hour or the evening hour the weight of the flesh is more you get it in the morning you get less in the evening get the more why it will be with water sir cleaned with water in the morning there is a lot of water to be there to the flesh but the evening because yes, of the weather condition the water will be evaporated only okay. fresh will be thrown over there but you know this butcher people are so much uh, wise they put the water time to time the spring sir the video is not uh, available sir excuse eh? me sir video is not uh, coming sir only your voice is uh, listening aha uh -huh, but why you are not coming me <laughs> why you no, are no, no, yeah, yeah, sir you are sir, okay sir video visible Because, uh, i will check it i will check it no problem sir recorded started video i stop sharing no i am sharing my video Now, yes, sir. my video means i am sharing the my file but you could not see my face sir, sir. Yes, sir. 
Oh. You could not see my face, but uh, I am sharing uh, my file. Audio only mode uh, displayed, sir, on my screen. Oh, my dear. Uh, 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 are we ready? Yes, sir. Very clear, sir. Uh, sir video now video you video. tell me where the fart <laughs> lies. Sir? Both, both yeah. audio and video is uh, very, very much clear. Yes, sir. Very so clear, sir. Even, even, even I magnified now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Magnified also. So it is a problem of me, sir. Okay. Yeah. I, the width is yes, very much sir. less because if you are using the yeah. mobile data, it will not catch it. Suppose you are using the Wi-Fi. No, no, no. If, if mobile not the the data not catches, if your voice also not be to be here. Because I am using the Wi-Fi and uh, AV yeah. Ready also using the Wi-Fi. That's why he could see uh, what I posted on the screen. Plus you could hear what I'm saying. Yeah, sir. Okay. See, I'm okay, using sir. the high microphone here, which I kept, uh, okay. kept okay. my, I will show you where. <laughs> see, this is the high microphone, which I kept over here. Did you see it now? It is here under my neck. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a high power microphone. I put it over there so that voice would get, get it more. And it's clear, sir. Are, voice is weak. The reason will not come out there. Then the earphones are there. You could you could see it because it's in the black. You could not see it. With the white, you could see it. Okay. Can I proceed? Proceed, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. In a ordinary leakage or weight loss and uh, ordinary wear and tear is there. So that will not yeah, be yeah. covered in the trade, in the insurance. And the four, third point is loss caused by inherent vice, like a nature of subject matter. For example, perishable commodities like the fruits and tomatoes, vegetables, it it will be deteriorated, it will deteriorate or it become putrid after some time without any accidental cause. This is known as inherent vices. Are you getting me? If you do tomato lesson on Kondi, what is the role of the Indian Manchi? One or two days, sir. Okay, one week on Kondi. This is a green one. One week, sir. After that, it will be rotten and it will be spoiled. Then the smell will come and we cannot use it. So that is the inherent vice. But when it comes to the matter of the potatoes, Long period of time. What about the pulses? It will take the longer time. Of course, more longer would be there. Again, they will, uh, inherent uh, is there. That law, purgulu vadate, it will send insects. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Yes. Number fourth one, loss caused by delay. Even though a delay is caused by an insured, an insured risk. Sometimes loss caused by delay, even though the delay may be caused by insured risk. Sometimes untoward incidents will happen, then delay would be there. At that in day also there. But intentional delay is there, then it can be covered. So last damage due to the inadequate packing. If the, your packing is not good, then you cannot do it anyway. Hence, packing waterproof, you have to make it out, leak proof, you have to make it out, then it will be quite good. Then sixth, Loss arising from the insolvency or financial default of the owner or operator, etc. of the vessel. Suppose the vessel owner has become a default, I mean a insolvent. At that instance, nothing could you realize it. The loss arising from the insolvency or financial default of the owners or operator, etc. of the vessel. If the vessel becomes an insolvent over there, at the time also you cannot get it. It comes under the exclusion class. So in this way, yeah, it will be five minutes. It will be closed. Okay, I will I will cover this much. So last damage to the inadequate packing, we covered it. Insolvency of the owner, we covered it. War and kindred perils. If the war will be there, broken out between the two countries, that we cannot expect it. Hence, that will not be covered. And this can be covered on payment of extra premium. Okay, in the case if it is there, if any war would be there from the other country, if you pay the extra premium, then it will be covered over there. But how could you know that a war is going to be uh, going to be happen 
unless until you know it there is a cold war is going on rebellion is going on there the rebels are more insurgents are more at any time they will attack they will they will they will try, try to capture the ruling party at that instance we can make it the extra premium we can make it and see that the goods will be reached to the in time and you pay the extra premium they will take the more risk and see that it reached to the destination in case if it is loss over there that will be compensated by the insurer then strikes riots lockouts civil commotions terrorism can be covered on payment of extra premium even this also will be covered on the extra premium because we are paying the more amount with them when the more amount will be paid to them because of the strikes or lockouts or riots if any other thing such a thing would be going on there at that instance if the premium that you are paying more even that also be covered over there so it is nothing but riders if the rider you keep it strikes and rider you keep it the riots rider you keep it the lockout if any other such a thing will happen then the premium will be more then that will be covered so this is the way that we can see then we can have the morale hull insurance uh, what is hull insurance then we'll see it tomorrow at any time it will be going to be closed and subdivision of the hull insurance will be also there so from the hull insurance we will see it uh, in the tomorrow class uh, because marine insurance is a big topic uh, because the coverage is more in the marine insurance there we can say general cargo vessels uh, dry bulk carriers liquid bulk carriers passenger vessels and other vessels and fishing vessels and offshore oil vessels hull and machinery insurance these are all the above things all come under the hull insurance so this way that we will try to cover it uh, at any time it will going to be closed so thank you very very for your patient listening and we will meet you tomorrow at 7:10 exactly up to the 8 o'clock and uh, by this i would like to close my today session goodbye and good day thank you thank sir you. Thank, thank you, you sir. Much. Thank you very much. Leave the end yeah. of meeting. Yes.